Hey guys, welcome back to the second episode of Wrench's Way. Last episode, we decided, we went ahead and started off with making our primary armament for this light cruiser. Or at least that's what I'm going to call it. This is a 250 millimeter dual barrel that uses AP heat or hash. We'll decide on what shell to use or a reference back to that video. If you want to see the making of the gun and the decorations on the turret cap, I have two separate videos, one with and without the footage of me making the turret cap. This video will be focusing on creating the hull, sizing what we want it to be, the armor layout we want, how many guns we want, and it's pretty much the base, it's the starting platform for us to be able to make our ship. So let us begin the construction of the hull. For me, I have a template already set out of all my colors so I don't have to transfer them across my fleet. And that's not entirely necessary, that's up to you, that's just so my life is easier. So what I'll normally start off doing is I'll just make one long singular pole of metal, or whatever the material I'm making the ship out of. In this case I'm going to be making a metal. My, uh, Cold War style fleet, I normally use alloy to help keep down on weight uh, and increase its speed. So, something we need to figure out is we need to place down how many guns are we going to want so we can also adjust the size of the hull. So we of course want one up in the front, and now we got the upper version. And I'll save this. Except I split up a three piece. Fuck it, I don't care. Anyway. So, this will be the spacing that we have up in the front. Now, we will probably want to make some small secondaries, but we will find that, we will figure that out here in a little bit. So, now let's also judge where we want the rear guns to be. So, for this one, I'm going to have four of these cannons since they are relatively cheap and we want some more firepower. So we'll judge it about right there. So I normally just kind of eyeball it, have a general idea of how big I want this thing to be. For some that may be a little bit harder to do, but as I said in the previous video while making the turret cap, whoops, uh, it's always good to have a reference image if you are making something that's of a realistic style. Now if it's futuristic, yeah, it's a little bit harder to do. Now that we've laid out the primary armament, now we can begin to shape the shell around it. What I like to do personally is I like to start from the bottom and go up. I quite frankly cannot understand or wrap my head around how people build from the top down. But that's just me. That's just my way of building. Which is why you're here. Now, depending on the kind of hole style I'm going for, will depend on if I taper this or not. What I mean by that is, well, going to two meters and one meter, one meter, one meter, one meter, all the way up to the front. So, for battleships, since they're a little bit more bulgy and longer up in the front, I will do something more along the lines of, I'm going to make this a different color, make it like out to here start off there and then widen out a little bit and then taper back out so it kind of gives it that bulgy effect while also making the nose real long for the effect which I have a battle cruiser which I am currently working on uh, which I think is probably gonna be one of my favorite ones it's got some pretty badass armament that I made uh, it's gonna be kind of terrifying honestly uh, and of course once I'm finished with that I will be uploading a video, another showcase uh, of that ship. But that one's going to be a project that's going to take some time. Because it is not particularly the smallest ship in the world. Now, for those who possibly may be wondering uh, why I'm making the rear flat, you'll see why later. So, now that we got the basis of this set out, which actually I think I'm going to make that. Whoops, one thinner. Actually, I'm gonna make that two thinner. This is a light cruiser after all. I want this the thing I want this thing to be relatively fast. So then in that case we will just come back here like that. 
Bam. So now, how about... What the hell? Why the fuck is that alloy? Ah, that's right. It's because I was working on and finished, actually, an airship. Uh, which I which is now integrated into my fleet, which you all will be getting a showcase video here probably sometime today, the same day that this is going up, of the airship, which didn't really take that long to build. And normally I don't build airships or stuff of that style, but one of the guys that I play with, he finally convinced me to come out of my box a little bit on that. So, and honestly, I'm kind of I'm kind of happy I did. Uh, it turned out pretty cool. Uh, not too shabby. Could take on a lot of the Onyx Watch before it goes uh, starts going down into the earth. Has deployable planes, and yeah, it's 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 pretty pretty cool. Pretty pretty cool. So I'm thinking about possibly also making a larger airship too. One that's more of a, I guess, more of a mothership. Uh, this one I made does have deployable interceptors. Uh, just my normal interceptors, ones I already had. I didn't build any special, uh, for this ship. But, um, thinking about making a larger one with more armament. Because this airship also is armed with cram cannons uh it, it's kind of reminiscent of uh gray talons which i've always i've never really gone up against much because i haven't played much campaign but their airships i think are still pretty cool uh so i'm thinking about once i am finished making more of the fleet i'll be doing a let's play series of a neater campaign which some of you may enjoy some of you may not, and that's up to you if you want to watch it or not. I will probably do it. And I've also thought about seeing if, if any of my buddies want to do an adventure mode, and we record that. There's also the possibility that I might also record other games, such as like Factorio. And there ain't a snowball's chance at hell I'm going to upload videos on Elden Ring, because my ass is way too bad at that, and my PC is barely able to handle that, because... Uh, for those who are unaware, I bought a gaming laptop. I don't have a PC. I have the money to buy a really good PC. I just don't feel like spending it. I'd rather spend it on guns. Because I'm a fucking American. Okay. So, let's see here. How far is this section? Ooh. That may be a little bit too high. We actually may need to make this hole a little bit... This is an odd situation I normally don't have. I normally don't have it to have the gun so small that the huh how long is this thing once again hmm interesting because that only leaves let's see Whoop. God. Good door, I think. Yeah, that only leaves three blocks of the upper section um Mmm. Well, I tell you what we could do. So we could go ahead and make a second layer down here. And that second layer uh, may, of course, uh, add to our weight. But it'll also aid us in defending against torpedoes that might try to come up and underneath the ship. So. I normally do double layers on a lot of my ships. Uh, belly armor just to try and defend against torpedoes and submarines. It's also good for, especially when you're going up against white flares and their melee craft come up against you or start going down and try to come up from underneath you, you at least have a little bit of extra, a uh, little bit of extra wiggle room before you start getting your cheeks clapped. And there we go. So now we can just kind of grip that. We're gonna have to adjust that, but And we're gonna have to adjust that too. Nice. All right. All right. There it was. And also, if that still doesn't look quite right, something we could do, which I've never really had to do before, is raise the guns up itself. Or we could raise up the turret next, make the internals farther down to the ship, and even be able to have double air armor on this motherfucker. Which would be pretty sick, we'll say. 
but it's gonna raise cost more. Yeah, it's gonna raise the cost more if I have to do that. We'll just leave it as is for now. We'll see how it looks once we get the rest of the hole kind of laid out. And if we decide that we want to raise it up a little bit more, then we can. Yeah, that's not all too bad. We can work with that. We can also make a small torpedo belt look as well, if we want. Probably should be kind of nice. Alright. Now that we've got that laid out, now let's go ahead and do a little bit of... Actually, hang on. Oops. We're going to add just a small raised section up here in the front of the ship. too bad a little too bad and that gives us plenty of armor actually maybe a little bit maybe a little bit too thick honestly ah who am I kidding more armor the better so when it comes to armoring uh, a lot of the times I do not do barbettes only on kind of the larger stuff I'll do barbettes but, so, I'll normally start off with the shell around it. Oops, didn't go far enough. So, start off with the shell around it. I like to do one to two layers of outer armor. But, since we are going to be uh, trying to make this thing a little bit lighter, instead of making two layers of metal, what we're going to do is make it a layer of metal and then a layer alloy trying to get into the habit of using more alloy on the inner walls increase buoyancy because of the sheer amount of armor that I use uh, it kind of uh, is detrimental when it comes to trying to make the ships float naturally so actually that's a little bit too tall oh, oh, where do we go I'm so not used to being able to fast move. Uh, they recently updated the game and updated camera controls, and I'm not used to being able to fast move in build mode. So it kind of fucks me up a little bit. Okay, so we want... Since we're a relatively smaller ship, we're not going to be able to have as much room for uh, heat and hash protection, which is mainly just wedges. Uh, what we will do instead is we will use poles. So in this case, we want just a little bit of edge on the enemy. We want a little bit of uh, extra armor. So here, we're going we're gonna to fill that in with metal. Uh, and then we are going to fill this in with alloy poles. Yes, we'll go ahead and do that. Now, nope, let's make that alloy. And the reason why... Poles and especially wedges, the bigger the better. So, if you're able to have like a battleship that has four meter wedges, that'll be the most ideal for you. That's because these double as uh, armor against kinetic and like hollow point rounds, but also acts as an air pocket uh, to be able to mitigate heat and hash. So, the more of it, the better. So, we'll just use that basis and come back here once we finish up with this armoring uh, around the primary armaments now that we've got the primary hull actually uh, pretty well taken care of uh, the secondaries I'll probably be using will be ones I've already made uh, if you were if you want to make a secondary uh, on your own uh, for your own ship or something like that and you don't know how to make like a turret cap or anything uh, well, I've got the video just for you, uh, one of my previous videos, uh, showing the tips and tricks and the certain things that I do while going through the turret cap building process. Now, we have finished the armor around here, so we can kind of just pre 
the fuck? Uh, like I said, we're going to prefab all through here. Uh, back a little bit more. We're only going to be able to go out to there. And just flip it around and do 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 do. Bam! Now we can just make our few minor adjustments around here. Oh, I am not mirroring like a retard. Okay, so I believe our next step will be shaping up the rear end. So for whenever I make the hole like this, I always like to just make it flat, not worry about it for now. But now, oops. <clears throat> this to where it doesn't fall there we go okay like I was trying to say we will come through here and just chop off a big old section in the rear okay ooh and since we use double layer we can start the angling down here when the fuck is snapchatting me oh. So, we want to try and do somewhat of a gradual slope leading up to there. So, I'll kind of start off with just, I uh, normally do it in intervals of four just to keep it a little bit easier on the hole making and shaping. And do that, and then we will make just a little flat spot. And then an angle up. Hmm. Actually, let's do this. Oh! God damn it. You're not fine. Haha! Can't fall off now, or so now we could just do that. <clears throat> Make a flat spot, flat spot. There you go. Simple as that. <laughs> Nothing super duper absolutely fancy, but then I also like to add just like a little bit of a metal fin here in the center. Just have it we'll worry about the propulsion at a later time. So, now we need to worry about our secondary. Well, we could do that, actually. Oh! <laughs> oh, yeah, buddy! Let's go! Let's do that. Let's use that. That's my, uh, that's my Fletcher Class Destroyer's main guns. They're a 120, but damn. I, it, this one was probably my most detailed turret cap it was ridiculous to make because the thing about it is just for shits and goggles for you all we are going to do uh let's see here you know we'll do it over here so i don't have to replace it over there so we are going to do v remove all decorations that's what the turret cap actually looks like 
Here we go. Hey. And that's what it is. That one. That, that took a while. It was absolutely fucking ridiculous. Because I didn't want it to make I didn't want to make it five full blocks wide, but I also didn't want it to be only three blocks wide. So I put myself through the ringer and torture and decided to do that. So we could use a few of those. Let's see, how expensive are those? Fourteen thousand? Oh, that's actually not that bad at all. Not as bad as I remember. So then in that case, what we could do is we can make little cutouts here in the hole. That way we can add a few of these secondaries just for extra firepower. And there we go. 262,000. Our target tar target target cost is about 350k. So this will give us pretty formidable uh, firepower while also maintaining our cost. Something we can also do is we can actually widen out the hole by one more just to give us two layers of armor for those secondaries because that's kind of an expensive secondary to get lost immediately. So we're going to do that real quick. These are all the little fine tuning and just adjustments that I make throughout all of my ships. So there's something else we can do just to add a little bit of depth. That. Like that, we got two layers of armor around the outside of the turret. At least the secondaries. So, uh, it's a pretty good layout. Pretty formidable. Pretty powerful. So now we will need to go ahead and armor up around these turrets and then we will start implementing the AI, the ammo storage, and the engine. Which I'm contemplating, uh, I've recently started using steam turbine engines which some people uh, cringe at and do not like, which is fine. You're entitled to your own opinion and it's your ship or whatever vehicle you're making it's up to you what you use but sometimes a steam turbine which like I'm going to use on my uh, battle cruiser works pretty well yeah it uses a decent amount of materials to get it up to its a uh, pressure point but once it gets up there it really doesn't use that many materials to produce shit it was like 36,000 power for my really big battle cruiser so not too shabby not too shabby i mean things gonna be in the 650 to 700k region a price it's not gonna be cheap it's a big motherfucker it's gonna hurt so bam okay let's go ahead and save that before i forget let's see if I've, I've used that name before oh my god that's such an old design Holy shit! That thing is so old! Oh man, I don't even have it no more. I've got backups. Damn! Well, too bad for the backups. It ain't ever getting recovered. That's okay though. That, that, uh, that ship was, uh... I guess we could say the ancestor of this. But this will be significantly fucking better. Because it actually has armor. My other ships, my old ships, may have been able to float pretty nicely. But that's also because they had a lot of air pockets, because they had hardly any armor. <laughs> so, take that uh, with a grain of salt. Or a few. So, for this, I am going to use a gas engine. Which I have what I call my nightmare gas engine because it's an absolute fucking nightmare to make, but it works. Ah, oh, it's too tall. No, it's not. Well, do we really want to do that though? Nah, we'll do a steam turbine on this. This is gonna be 
pretty easy, pretty easy. So let's do. We need steam. So out here, out here. I do it like I don't know, right there. Like that. Materials. So, in that case, then we will. Alright. So, next thing we could do is we could kind of surround that thing in batteries. Since the steam turbine no produces electrical power, we need batteries and an electric motor to make it work. So we've got 6,800 power. Not too shabby. Put that down at half. And now a good way to test the load and see how many materials a second it's going to use. Uh, we are going to... Where is it? We're gonna put a load under it. So we're gonna put an ECM jammer on here, and we're gonna wait for it to. Here, hang on. Okay. Good God! Why do we have so much material storage? Oh, okay. Never mind. I'm on the harbor. I was so confused on why it had 700,000 material stories from one cargo container. I was like, what the fuck? Uh, okay, so now that we're on the ship, we got our materials. We are going to bump that power consumption up to max. Use all the power. Stop giving. Okay. So if we look down at our materials and how it's draining, that's really not all too bad. And we look at the electrical power, and it's actually keeping up with the power demand. It's able to recharge pretty fast, we, fast, we? Pretty fast without using too terribly many materials. Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. I gotta say. I gotta say. So, we're gonna get rid of that. I doubt we'll be using every single bit of that engine power, but we'll see. So, simple, compact, and bada bing, bada boom, there we go. We have a nice turbine engine powering the ship. So, we will be using metal to surround that. Well, since we could kind of, you know, fit it, let's do just, yeah, let's do two meter uh, wedges, because I want some more air pockets in here. So, we will float easier. I'll do it like that. Bam. I will expand this up. Okay. So, there's our engine. So, now we can go ahead and do... Let's see here. Let's do this. Just, just some more material storage here. Can work now. So, I think our next step should be, oops, wrong material, definitely the AI. Now, I'm going to show, I'm going to show you all a certain technique that I, or I guess not really a technique, but certain settings that I use on my ship's AI. I do it on every single one of my ships, and it works pretty damn well. And that is how to get your AI to aim for weaponry and get it to knock out weapons relatively quickly with pretty consistent success but I will show you that once I get all this set up alright so now this will be the very little amount of heavy armor that's going to be on this vehicle and that's going to be for the AI so what we're going to do is we are going to
All right, so now let's do. Actually, let's do this. Oh, perfect! Look at that. Okay. So now I like to use stone, and I'm gonna paint it black. So, because for some reason, I'm painted is blinding fucking white. No, thank you. I don't feel like losing my retinas. My eyesight is already poor enough. Okay, so I'm going to surround us in stone to help with EMP protection. We are going to go ahead and start the AI. Alright, now here is how I get it to where it will aim for the weapons. And you need a target prioritization card and an aim point selection card. On the target prioritization, you've got all these different options on what you want. And this is how you get it to aim for what you want. So first off, I like to set everything to zero. Everything. And since we're worrying about weapons, we don't really give two shits about all this stuff up here. Firepower, I normally don't touch. What we want is, depending on what your vehicle is weakest to, or what you think is going to be your biggest weakness, is what you should focus on. So I think APS is definitely a big one. Missiles. Definitely a close second. Cram is probably more of an eight and a half. Probably about the same. Nine. There we go. Super simple like that. And then come over to the aim point selection. Try the aim for blocks above water. And don't do target uh, random blocks. Do cluster of blocks. Because, as you see with APS, it's a cluster of blocks for a gun. So it's going to aim for clusters of blocks, and it's going to aim for APS, missiles, crams, and such. So it's more likely to lock onto a gun and destroy that. So that's how I do it. Works pretty damn well. Now, unfortunately, you can't... Uh, I don't know any ways to get it to aim for, like, the big guns first, you know, the giant 500 millimeter cannons that may be ripping your ship to shreds and it's focusing on a little 50 millimeter <laughs> minigun on its side you know okay now the other things I like to do is I like to have uh, I like to have roll PIDs I do I don't use the AI PIDs the main reason why is whenever I turn off my AI and I want the ship to sit sit there and not roll over or pitch all over the place or I'm driving it manually, I want the controls to still be active even with the AI off. Some people don't do that. That's fine. This is just me. That's what I like to do. And you're here to see what I do. So. It's a pretty big AI case, but it's okay. And then on the outside of the case, I want to put some more surge protectors. Try and protect it from EMP blasts. So we got our AI, we got our engine, now we need some ammo storage. So I'll put an ammo storage up in the front and in the rear. Uh, something else we could do, uh, we could get a general idea for how much ammo we're going to need. We're pressing V, we're taking a look, uh, well we got to give these things their ammo customizers. I honestly don't remember what shell I was going to use on that. but. We'll figure something out. So let's, uh, I think we actually got room inside the AI box. Oh, yeah, we do. We do, we do, we do. Maybe. Um, ooh, maybe not. Maybe not enough. Let's see. Let's see if we got enough room to stick the weapons, uh, weapon, uh, ammo controllers in. Let's see here. So, we have 
Let's do AP. So two fifty. Two fifty. Three meter clip. So, oh wow, that was actually perfect. Holy shit. Mm, damn, I'm good. So we will be using, let's do an AP heat round on this. And then over here, we'll do the other cannon's gun. Well, the other cannon's gun? No. The other gun's thing. So we will do hash on this, because we just love internal damage. Let's see here, what are we looking at? Ooh, a little too long. Hash. Uh, damn. Okay. So we'll do hash, and then we'll do. Now the beauty with hash is we don't have to worry about the shell speed being super fast, because it doesn't matter. It doesn't have any armor piercing effect. It just hits the metal, squishes, and then sends a bunch of hot molten metal inside. So fantastic. The more uh, high explosive war bodies the better. Okay, so we need to adjust it down just a little bit. Bam. Just like that. Okay, uh, we're gonna add some temporary ammo just for now, just so we can get a bunch of it reloaded. We're gonna have a few torpedoes on this too. Okay, let's make sure that these have the correct shell. Yes, they do. Oh, good. They are already... I think they can't even fit inside each other anyway. <laughs> yeah, I think they should already. Oh, nope. They're trying to use the AP heat. We don't need you using AP heat. We need you using Hesh. Okie dokie. So now that we've got everything set out... Oh, that's funny. 120 millimeter firing 120 RPM. Nice. Anyway, so we can look here and see weapon material usage is 4,090. So that'll tell us the minimum amount of ammo that we need. So we're probably going to put it up at about 5,000 because we're going to have a few torpedo launchers. Let's see how we do on our cost. Oh, ooh, we're getting close. We're getting pretty fucking close. But we're almost done with all the internals, so we should be okay. We'll still be in about the 350 range. Uh, so we'll put it up at about same level that it's at. Of course, more armored than this, but that way we do not run out of ammo in the middle of battle. That would be very, very unfortunate. Lots of, lots of armor. Never a bad thing to have a lot of armor. Makes you more survivable. Makes you more of a dense motherfucker. How much ammo does that give us? Well, it actually gives us quite a lot. So let's cut back on that a little bit. There we go. Armor is now, oh, I'm sorry, ammo is now armored up. That put us right over 300k, so we are approaching our uh, cost goal. So it looks like we are just barely going to be able to stay within it. But that's okay, because we've got a good amount of armament. we got a good amount of armor, and we got a good, uh, good amount of actual weaponry to uh, fight the enemy with. So, I think this will probably be a pretty decent ship. Not the absolute most powerful ship in the world, and it's not going to be able to defeat all of Nidor on its own. Uh, but none of my ships do. None of them are designed to do that. Fuck! <laughs> Forgot that wasn't connected... Uh, dink and dink. Yay! Now you're connected. You won't get chopped off immediately. Bastard. So now the hole is pretty well, uh, almost complete, really. There isn't much else we are able to do. We could compartmentalize this a little bit with alloy for buoyancy and also just for more air pockets in case one gets punctured. Um, so 
So we've got our ammo, we've got our AI, we've got the engine, we've got the ammo controllers, everything. Okay, these actually need to get set to number two since they're secondaries because all the weapons are getting put on weapon slot number one. That means I'm also going to have to go down and adjust the turret bases. Son of a bitch. Let's take a look at what our cost is right now. Oh wait, I forgot to actually name the thing other than just that. Alright, I have a lot in my classic fleet and not a lot in my modern. Forget that. The aircraft carrier ain't gonna be done for a while. I haven't felt like working on it. Anywho, so now we've got all of our main armaments ready to go. That's a lot of firepower it's gonna have. What's here? What's our firepower at? 269. Not too bad, not too bad for this thing. So let's go ahead and put on the deck. So with that, we now set 318,000 materials for everything in the hole, all the firepower, and almost all of it. Let's go ahead and place down our torpedo launchers that we're going to be using. I've already got some made, so we'll just be using those. Alrighty. That is going to put us right at, we have 7,000 in wiggle room for the superstructure and detect, the detection. Well, no, we haven't even made the turret next yet. What am I fucking talking about? You know, we'll take care of the turret next in the next video whenever we work on the superstructure. Because some of those turret necks are going to be implemented into the superstructure. So, just as a little demo... To show you the power, to show you the power of Flex Seal, um, we are going to spawn in the enemy, and I will show you uh, the weapon aiming AI. And now, immediately aims for that secondary there. Oh wow! Holy shit! Good God! It chain reaction those guns. I know they normally do that, but holy shit! What the hell did this thing hit? Okay, hang on. We're gonna see if we can replicate that. Um, repair. That was a little bit more effective than I was. The, whoops, wrong guns. Okay. Try it again. So he'll pop that turret. So now it's going for some of the guns over there. Disable that one. Might need to stagger fire those. Oh! Torpedo! Went through and detonated that gun. Anyway, you can definitely see that the weapons will focus fire on turrets and different weaponry. I think that's enough bullying it. Anywho, that'll be kind of the effectiveness of this ship. So, that is the completion of the hull. Thank you all for watching, and tune in next time for whenever we start to work on the superstructure and the detailing of the ship.